Hello and welcome, or welcome back. It is time once again to try to fix something, and today we're going to be looking at another PS5 Blu-ray edition, which I believe is a no power. Looking it over, it uh, is in really good condition. Kind of surprisingly good. Um, I have not tried anything, but I did plug it up. And I've got a new towel down, because my last uh, PlayStation was that disgusting digital one that I worked on. Nasty, so I had to replace this. What does she do? No eject. No power. Okay. This is going to be another dead power supply. Is it going to be that simple? Let's get into it and find out. Well, the outer cover off, at least the right side is off, and I'm, I guess I can't say it's never been opened. doesn't look that way. And I'm not sure what's going on with these marks on this cover. But I'm seeing the majority of the screws. That's always a plus. Okay. Let's see if we can get this cover off. All right, our first problem. I went to unplug the fan, which I've never had a problem doing. You just wiggle it slightly. And yeah, that's been repaired already. And I pulled it loose. So it was not repaired very well. But yeah, the fan connector has been ripped out. You can see the... Uh, solder mass that somebody put over it. So anyway, no big deal. We can fix that. I'm just uh, passing the information along. Another problem to deal with. Alright, so I got that black cover off. It does look like this was repaired and it looks like they tried to use conformal coating or solder mask to hold down the connector itself. I think. She's not anchored very well or she wasn't yeah so yeah we'll, we'll deal with that but right now she doesn't even turn on so that's kind of the least of our worries if I can get down to this 12 volt you know connector down here and see if we have any power all right rather than uh, take out all 800 screws just to get to those terminals I swapped in a known good supply so this is the supply out of there this ribbon cable was not locked in and I don't think I ripped that out. I think those ears have been damaged. Anyway, so we may have an issue locking this back in there, but we don't need it for right now. That's just for the front panel USB ports. Um, and this is on this supply that came out. Looks a little like your old standard gray uh, thermal compound. So I'm hoping we haven't had somebody swap out the thermal uh, you know, liquid metal for thermal compound. But anyway, one problem at a time. Uh, we have a known good supply in there. What does it do now? Uh, about the same as it was doing before. Nothing. Make sure this ribbon connector is down in there good and isn't damaged. Nope. No signs of life whatsoever. Okay. Well, let's get on into it. Well, the metal shield is removed. And it is an EDM 10 main board. Uh, and I can confirm that we do have 12 volts. So, of course, this is my uh, spare supply. But uh, that's where we are. I don't see any obvious signs of previous work other than that. Um, like I was looking around the HDMI port to see if that had been... Uh, well, you know, now there is signs. It looks like where there's been flux right in there, isn't it? See how that's changed color? Flux does that. It, like, removes the oxidation. So, yeah, we may find signs of previous work on the other side of this board, I'm thinking. Well, let's get it inside. Okay, I've got the main board out, and this is a pretty bad case of... There's no, uh, you know, gray thermal compound, but that liquid metal has like totally ran away from the heat sink. It's all pulled up to the sides, you know, seen around the edges. And look at that uh, die on that processor. She wasn't cooling very well, I don't believe. So yeah, well, if we get it running, we'll have to correct that. Well, we are inside the workbench and I've already removed the uh, fan connector which was barely hanging on it's sitting over there now so that's something we'll have to do at some point is uh, clean up that mess 
But uh, anyway, that's for another another time. Right now, we need to get to where it turns on. Um, and I have been looking around this board ahead of time. Let me see if I can get my microscope camera going. And I think I found something already. Let's see. Let's look at the HDMI area uh, on the other side of the board. If I can flip this over. Yeah, the port itself, I think, is, is original. I don't think it's been changed. Let's look under the microscope. Um, the port, I think, is original. Although those pins look to be broke loose, don't they? The microscope, the microscope sure reveals all, doesn't it? Look at that. Is that? Is that broke loose? Is it even in the shot? No, of course not. Maybe it's secure. It just has that, you know, that dark ring under the under the uh, pin that makes it look like it's not connected. Well, well, we'll be able to tell with the continuity check or diode check. But look at this uh, encoder I see. That has been changed. You can tell by the flux and the way that it's offset. And some of these pins do not appear to be soldered. Now, where, where'd where it go? Where'd it go? There it comes. I'm trying to angle it where you can see better. Yeah, not too good. An attempt was made. But I'll be the first to admit, QFNs are tough. They're not the first thing you want to learn on if you're trying to do this kind of stuff. They're not the easiest. Uh, a little stray flux around over some of this stuff, but uh, I don't, hopefully now this was messed with over here. So did somebody we had we had a no video problem and they went to open it up and they ripped the fan connector. I I don't know the chain of events here exactly. And usually if this encoder I see is is bad, you get the uh single beep when you press the power button, but it won't turn on, it just beeps. Um maybe it acts differently if there's um you know, some of the pins aren't connected on the encoder, I see, I don't know. But usually if it just fails, you just get that single beep, which is not what we're getting. But this does look like a good place to start. Um, lift that, put it back down a little bit better, and see if it makes any difference. I'm just looking to see if there's any capacitors or resistors missing in the vicinity. Some of them have been bumped a little, but that's no big deal. But, okay, that looked like a good place to start. Let's see if we can straighten that up some. And we'll go from there. All right, I lied. We're going to make a few diode checks before we take that thing off. Um, look under the microscope with me here. Around this encoder, I see. And I'm in, I'm in diode mode with my red probe on ground. You see these little bypass caps. Let me make sure you can see them. Yep. That measures good. 0.38. That's a dead short. That's a dead short. That's a dead short. And also over here. That one's fine. That's point three. That's on a different rail, apparently. So one of the rails in here is shorted. I'm trying to make.
make sure this stays in the shot. So that one's good. That one's shorted. That one's shorted. That's shorted. So yeah, we have a, a shorted rail, which may or not may or may not be this encoder. I see. I, I'm going to guess it. There is some solder that's gone somewhere it shouldn't. But um, at least now I can take that off, and I'll know to check before I put it back down. I'll check on some of these uh, some of these capacitors and see if that short is gone. Could be a bad chip. Always a possibility. the encoder I see is off and let's do a quick check to see if we still have a short now the board is flipped from however it was originally because it was just you know it's more stable for me when I'm desoldering that chip this way but so um, red probe on ground I'm in diode mode these capacitors down here are the, some of the ones that were shorted before no short there I know that one was one of the ones that was shorted no short no short. And over here, let me make sure they stay in the frame. No shorts anywhere. All right, so the problem was the encoder I see now. Is it a bad IC or not? I don't know. Um, was it just because it was a little bit askew? I really don't know. But I'm going to try to make a few checks, maybe if I can, and just try to confirm. You know, if I find shorts on, I'll have to try to, you know, put the IC back down here and kind of line up, you know, which pin is the uh, supply pin. Like, uh, you know, the second and third one from this corner over here are going to be a supply pin. So if I can flip this over and check it, I just like to, you know, if it's a dead short, there's no point in putting this back on there. All right, let's go ahead and do that, I guess, on camera. Um... This is that encoder I see that I took off. And it was this pin here that was shorted. But this is also a supply rail. You can tell by the bypass cap going to ground right there. So from this corner, one, two, three in, right? All right, if I can get a hold of this thing without it running off, let's look at that. So flipping it, so it'd be... one two three in from that upper right corner and put a meter in diode mode red probe on the center so one and two diode reading and three short and i don't see like a solder splash anywhere on any of these pins like it's you know being shorted by some solder 
Um, all right, so I think we have a bad chip. That's shorted the ground. I have another chip here, which I think is a good one. Because I think I swapped out one in, in maybe in another video. I swapped out an encoder, and it was not the problem. So let's do the same thing. I've got to get it turned right. So if it goes like that on the board, right, with the dot up in the upper right, we flip it. Let's check here. Red probe on that center ground pad. One, two, three. Now it's reading a point three oh five. And what is this one? Point six two one on the on the second one from the corner. And point three oh five. So yeah, I'm glad I didn't put that other chip back on there. So I think I'm gonna try putting this used one on here. I do have some new ones, but um, they are expensive. I think this is a good one. I need to clean it up a little bit. Oh, it's got, looks like it's got pretty good solder on there. I need to get this extra flux off there. And let's put this chip on there and see if it's you know, if this PS5 is any happier. Our encoder IC has been uh, reinstalled, and I did I did do a, a diode check. I, I plugged in my breakout board and did diode checks into the uh, looking back into the chip, and everything checked great. So I think we're in good shape there. If that's our only issue, I have noticed over here to see the signs of flux around F seven five zero two. Yeah, it's been changed out. So yeah, apparently someone felt the need to replace a fuse there. Something we need to keep in mind. Um, I do want to do a quick check of the current draw of this board. So I've got my supply hooked up and make sure I got my polarity right. See the little plus symbol right there on the board. Um, I want to see what kind of current it draws when you apply 12 volts to it. Now it should shoot up to like 300 milliamps and then come back down. Let's see what it does. That's not good. That's not good. That did not do what I'd like to see it do. Nope, we've got another problem. Um, maybe a dead south bridge. I need to look see if there's any, any work done around the south bridge, but I have a feeling we have a rail, a voltage rail that's missing in some way, because that did not look normal. 
Let me see what I can figure out. All right, so we have another problem on the board. And I was debating whether to start, you know, looking for shorts in continuity mode. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is hook up this supply again. Let's just see what what rails, what voltage, you know, what rails we have or don't have. Make sure everything. All right, let me apply 12 volts to it. Clarity looks right. Yep, we're 12 volts making it over here. All right, do we have, I think this is our 5 volt rail right over here. We have 5 volts. Do we have, there's a couple of rails around this encoder I see. I'm not sure if they should be there right now. Uh, let's see. Over around the, well, what about all these, this fuse that uh, has been changed? What's on that? 5 volts. And here's another fuse right here. Five volts is on that one. Um, look around. This is some sort of a uh, power management chip here. Some sort of a DC-DC converter. Don't see anything there. I don't yet have memorized where everything is on these boards. Uh, let me flip this over, though. I remember the five volts because I had a problem with the five volt one one time. You know, had a five volt shutdown problem. Um, right here under this south bridge. I know there are several. I'm not sure if this is in the shot. Let me check. Nope, of course not. I know there are several voltages that go into this south bridge right over here. I don't remember which ones are there all the time and which ones are not. That's a weird voltage right there, though. 0.03. There's a, there's a 1.8. Okay, that looks good. What is this? Nothing. I think this is a 3.3. .3. All right, that's strange. Our 3.3. .3. Where'd it go? Measures 3.14, but that's the probably the battery voltage, isn't it? What is it over here? So... Yeah, our 3.3 is not up. No, there it is. There's 3.3. So it is there. Nothing there. I don't yet have them memorized. I mean, all of these, I'm, I'm checking on these inductors around this thing. All these, uh, you know, relatively large inductors. These are all power rails coming in. But some of them are there in standby, and some of them are only there when it's powered on. Pretty much all of them are there when you first apply power. If this thing is working normally, like all those rails will come up for a second, maybe less than a second, and then they'll go away. Uh, so that's one way to check them sometimes. This is the SSD power area. And one of these capacitors over here is crooked. Like somebody's been heating in that area. I know this is generating power for the solid state drive built on the board generates like four different voltages but I don't think it's there all the time but I need to look at that area because I do see a crooked capacitor uh, here's another fuse with five volts on both sides of it so probably a good fuse we got this fan mess to take care of. I know that's a 5 volt cap right there. I remember that one. Hmm. But anytime a, it, it's like no power, not responding to the power button, I think South Bridge or something related to the South Bridge because that's kind of its job. Let me turn off this power. Let's just go to continuity mode and check around the south bridge. Let me uh, get my leads nulled out. I'm going to put the black probe on ground for this. 
and I'm going to probe on some of these inductors around the south bridge. No, nope, now this is going to have voltage on it here. Nope. Nothing shorted yet. What if I go to resistance mode? And null that out. Apparently the resistance decided to jump just as I hit no. There we go. So what do we have going into here? K ohms. K ohms. I think that's got the three volts on it, so it's going to be a little... It'll have three volts from the battery on it. One of these inductors will. 1.7. Not seeing any shorts. Okay. What about over here around this uh, SSD supply? Ooh, is that ground? That must be ground side, yeah. 97 ohms. Ah, that, that sounds good. That's in the 700 ohm range. All right, this all looks pretty good here. Nothing's dead shorted anyway. But I do want to look in the area because I do see that crew capacitor. Hmm, okay. I'll keep digging. All right, I've been taking a look around the area of the South Ridge, and I wanted to uh, share with you what I'm seeing under the microscope. Uh, flux. More flux. What looks to be some solder mask, maybe? Around the edge here. More flux around this 25 megahertz crystal. So, yeah, I have the feeling that this has been changed. And we don't know if it's seated properly. We just don't know, but it's something, something just to note in the back of our minds. Because I have noticed um, on the other side of the board, you know, on the back side of this is the, is the oscillator, the 32 kilohertz oscillator that you have to have running for this thing to boot up and it is not running. That oscillator, as far as I can tell, looking on the scope, is not running. Which usually either means a bad south bridge or a south bridge that's missing a power rail that it needs to, you know, to run. So, yeah, but somebody's been in this area chasing this issue before. And we're not totally sure what they may have done. The 32 kilohertz oscillator was not running and I wasn't completely sure why if it was a power rail issue or something else which I suspected which was since there had been some work under the south bridge that perhaps there was a lot of uh, excessive flux left under there and that crystal oscillator circuit the 32 kilohertz crystal oscillator is, is rather high impedance and if you get a lot of uh, flux right across the crystal or underneath the south bridge in the area where the crystal connects, it will prevent it from oscillating. So I decided to see if I could heat up the south bridge and then take some alcohol and flush out from under it to get any excess uh, you know, uh, flux out from under there to see if it would correct my uh, issue. And after drying it out thoroughly and testing again, it appeared to be running. So I think that was my, our issue. So that got that out of the way, and, and also it seemed to start drawing more current. It still didn't look quite right, like it wanted to hang at around 300 milliamps, but it was doing something different. It was definitely, it wasn't hanging at 11 milliamps like it was earlier, which was pretty much a dead south bridge at that point. So she's drawing more current, the oscillator's running. Well, let's see if we can give it a try out in the garage. All right, curiosity got the best of me. I just brought it back out to the garage to test it. I just got the uh, ribbon cable hooked up for the light. 
uh, the power button. I don't have the clamp on it. Uh, if it turns on, I'll put some pressure on it. We have our monitor on. What's going to happen? Oh, we turned on. Blue light. Of course, I don't have a fan to spin right now because of my uh, busted fan connector. And she shut off. Okay, she shut off. Okay. Is that progress? Maybe. Try it again. All right, you went... Basically, when I pressed it again, then I think it shut off. So now this should give us another test, another test run. On flashing blue. And we shut off. So I think we're we've made some progress, but we were still missing something. There's some rail that's not coming up somewhere. Something's missing. But that's, uh, that's progress. I think our South Bridge is working, and I think our HDMI encoder I see back here is working, because it won't turn on without it working. So we got another problem. OK. All right, I am still looking over this board. Uh, when, I was out in the, when I was out in the garage, I did check. I would hit the power button. And I noticed that the APU voltages and the RAM voltages were not coming on. So uh, I've looked all over the board, not sure of anything specifically, but I have found an area of concern right up here underneath this blue goop. And let me share that with you. Um, this whole area, once I pulled up this blue, uh, you know, thermal compound, whatever it is, it's all been superheated. I mean, look at this capacitor. How the plastic of it melted. And look at this little ceramic capacitor down here. Out of position. And then, as you pull up more of it down through here, I think I saw, right here. Look down in there. If I can get it in focus. Yet another ceramic capacitor. Just kind of floating around down in there I'm not sure how well that shows right in there yeah so that's out of position and there's like every one of these capacitors has been melted just like they put the heat gun to this area and just put it on full blast and I'm not sure why oh there's where that capacitor goes right there right down in there right there but why was this area, you know, tortured in such a way? I'm going to have to get all this stuff off here. Because I'm going to have to see. I mean, this, is, this has been melted. There's been a lot of heat in this area. The entire APU power supply rail area had been just super cooked. So I had to end up going through and removing ICs and uh, retinning them, putting them back down. Some of them, was, I, I was able just to heat them up and straighten them. Um, there was at least one bypass capacitor underneath one of the ICs. And there was, uh, you know, resistors I had to check. They were, everything in the circuit was suspect because it had been superheated and shifted around. But after a lot of uh, cleanup, uh, everything was looking pretty good. I couldn't find any obvious shorts Although the ICs had all been, you know, heated and moved around and shifted, none of them seemed shorted. So all I could do was clean up the area as best I could and replace anything that was missing, you know, making comparisons to a working board. And um, let's try it again. I mean, well, after installing the ICs, it looked good. So uh, I thought I would give it another try. All right, we are back out in the garage, ready to test this. I still have not cleaned up the uh, liquid metal, you know, it's not, it's still not pretty on that CPU. So, but we, I do want to see if it actually tries to turn on or not. Let's see what happens. Blue light. Nope, oh, it looks about the same. It looked about the same. It cut off about the same amount of time. 
Well, I was starting to run out of ideas on this PS5. Uh, so I went back over some of the circuits that I had noticed had been worked on before, at least they looked like they had been. And this particular IC in the HDMI circuit had been shifted, had been moved, uh, I'm guessing had been replaced. So I decided to go over it and check it, and it had a pin 2 of it was shorted. Pin 2 on this particular IC is the enable line for it. And this generates, I believe, 1.09 volts in the HDMI circuit when the PS5 is powered on. Um, and it was um, seemed to be shorted. The enable line was shorted to ground. So luckily, I was able to source, source one from a PS4 FAT. Apparently, they used the same chip back in the PS4 FAT days. And uh, so I was able to source one of those from a, from a donor board and install that. So that theoretically took care of that issue. But um, that wasn't the only issue. Um, when I kept digging in the circuit, uh, it, it was still not enabled properly. Um, and I discovered that on the other side of the board, opposite from where this IC is, is a transistor that drives the enable line on this IC. And it's a small digital transistor, a little three terminal digital transistor so it has built in BIOS resistors. And it was either faulty or it was the wrong one installed. I think the wrong one had been replaced. Uh, it needs a PNP digital transistor. This was an NPN digital transistor. So I sourced one from a PS5 board that I had laying around and put that in there. All right, where are we? We are back out in the garage. Um, after replacing that little tiny transistor right there, I decided to bring it out here and, and just give it a try. I didn't really expect it to have any uh, overall effect, you know. I figured it would keep you from having video, but I didn't think it would keep you from turning on. But it did have an effect, and I want to show you what it was. Um, watch the light over there now. If I can get it to... Oh, I unplugged it. Okay. All right. I got my buttons down here. Watch the light. Quick shutdown. Hit the power button again, and I guess it cuts off. A fast shutdown. It was a 10 second flashing blue light, and then a shutdown. And now it's a very fast shutdown. Now, I don't know if that's an improvement, but it's a change. And I want to show you something else if I have enough hands. I'm not sure that I do. Let's try this. Our APU voltage that was missing earlier. Watch this. 0.9 volts. That was not there at all earlier. Nothing was there. So, the stinking HDMI circuit can prevent the APU core voltage from coming up. That's weird. So, I think it's an improvement. I think that was the wrong transistor that was installed there. I think we have the right one now. But uh, now we have another issue to find. Hmm. All right, we are still on the hunt for this problem. And I decided to break out the thermal cam Although I really, I kind of felt like it was it was shutting down so fast there'd be no way to see anything. You know, there was like no time for anything to heat up. But I may have been wrong. It would appear we're going to be looking right in this area right in here. This I see right here, right there, the right one. Um, let me switch to the thermal cam and I'll show you what it's doing. All right, we are on the thermal cam now, and let me see if I can. Uh, Get this board turned on. You can see what it's doing. Oh, that was off. Can we hit? Well, I press it again. Well, it decided to calibrate right there. All right, that should be off. And I'm going to try it right again, right, right in there. See that? Gets hot really fast and shuts off. That is that right uh, IC, whatever it is. All right, I want to show you uh, what I'm reading. I'm in a resistance mode. I'm going to look at this bottom right pin right here. Right in there. 
with diamond resistance, my uh, black probe is on the ground. And we have six tenths of an ohm. And on a good board, I've checked, it's like, I want to say eight K ohms, several K ohms. So that should definitely not be shorted. So that's a problem. I don't know if that's the only problem remaining, but that is a problem. And let's see if I can figure out what that particular uh, chip is there. All right, I think I have identified our questionable part. Uh, you can see the, the, the lettering on it, 1FSF. And if I can zoom back out, turns out that is a Texas Instruments TLV755. 75518 to be exact. 755 is the family, I guess, the series of them. 18 because it's a 1.8 volt regulator. And our pin that is shorted, it appears, is going to be the output on pin 5. You can see it right there. So the IC itself could be just fine. Um, but we don't know where it goes because it goes to a VIA and just kind of disappears does not go straight through the other side of the board, so it's going to be interesting to kind of find it. But uh, that is where our short is, pin 5 of this 1.8 volt regulator. Well, I decided the best thing to do would be to just remove that regulator and attach a wire at that output point and use my bench power supply to inject 1 volt at 1 amp in hopes of finding the uh, short with the thermal cam. And that's where our story takes a turn for the worse. The short was located under the APU, or inside the APU. You can see it in this picture, the upper left corner uh, of the top of the die there on the processor. Yep, our short is internal to the APU. So it's a, it's a sad day, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Well, unfortunately, that's how this one's going to end. No fix on this one. Um, I can't really fix a dead APU. So, um, but I did pick up some knowledge along the way. I learned a lot more about the HDMI circuit, you know, some of the boot sequence of this thing. So I got some knowledge of it, and sometimes that's just how it goes. You, you, you can't fix them all, but hopefully I learned something along the way. Well, I hope you did also. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and I will be uh, seeing you in the very next repair. So long for now.